Good morning guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I have part one of a two-part perfume haul. So I have acquired quite a few amazing perfumes over the last few weeks and there were so many I really didn't even know where to begin. So I decided to split this into a two-part perfume haul and I'm going to share my thoughts on them with you in today's video. So a couple of the perfumes in today's video were gifted to me from So Avant Garde. The remainder of them were purchased with my own money. So if you guys are interested in a few of the perfumes today that were gifted to me from So Avant Garde or any other ones that you can get from their website, I will leave my discount code down below. You can save 15% on any order from So Avant Garde with the code Alithia15. If you're new to my channel, thank you for stopping by. My name is Alithia and on this channel we do talk a lot about perfume and if that's something that you're interested in, I would love if you would consider subscribing. Also make sure to stay tuned for part two that will be coming up probably later today. I'll probably just get them both up the same day <laughs> because I really wanted to do this video in one huge video, but it just would have been way too long. So yeah, here goes nothing. This is part one of my perfume haul for the last month or so. And also you guys make sure that you are subscribed and your notifications are turned on because I will also be doing like a best purchases so far of 2023 perfumes. I've been wearing the most lately, which ones I've gotten the most compliments. And I might even do like a worst purchases of the year so far video as well. There's lots of different stuff coming up and with that out of the way, let's get started. All right guys, so welcome back. I apologize. I know I wasn't here last week. I didn't upload any videos for the last week just because I've been so busy with work and also the week before I did actually upload like five or six videos in one week. So I just needed a little bit of a break and I'm back in today's video with basically sort of a collective haul. The majority of the perfumes in today's video, I have given them a proper wear test. I've worn them, I've tested them. Them. Um, and there's a couple that are sort of a little disappointing or I'm not really sure how I feel about them and there's a couple that are amazing. I absolutely love them. Some of them I purchased and just received the other day because I had decants of them or I had samples. So I have properly tested and worn everything that's in today's video and I can give you a really good idea of how I feel about them, how they wear, how long they last, all of that kind of stuff. I am just finishing up this candle from Bath and Body Works. This is Cozy Cashmere. I've had it forever. It's kind of just a really nice neutral candle that's been upstairs in my bedroom and the wax is looking a little bit gray but that's because it's almost at the end of its life so it's been burning a lot lately it was white and it's just like a really relaxing kind of all season all the time candle I'm actually really sad that I'm going to be done that one because it's been such a nice candle and after that I think we'll break into our spring scents our spring home scents which I'm really excited about this coffee mug you guys I wanted to share with you I found this on Amazon and it is adorable I absolutely love it so it's this like Nordic style coffee cup which I've been really getting into the whole Nordic style coffee cup thing lately it is so cute it has this circular little handle very aesthetically pleasing it's like a beige color and it has little speckles all over it and I just think it is so cute I absolutely love it it makes such nice photos if you are into taking pictures and you love coffee cups and things like that and I just have been loving it um, so I will link this down below it wasn't really expensive they also have numerous different colors I actually like it so much that I did order the plain white one and I also ordered the black and white speckled because that is how much I love it and as for my nails I just did my nails with my own um, gel nail supplies and this is actually kind of a a whitish gray color and I thought it would be really nice for spring so unfortunately today we are expecting 20 centimeters of snow what's new it wouldn't be Canada if we didn't have a really nice big snowstorm just to kind of round out you know the month and I just finished working a couple of night shifts I've only slept about 10 hours in the last two days a little bit tired but I'm feeling really good and I have a hair appointment this afternoon I have to go do some shopping and um, yeah I just thought I would sit down and talk about perfume because it's my favorite thing to do and we're gonna get right on into it okay so the first fragrance in today's video I really wanted to review this one for you guys because I've heard a lot of hype about this one this is the newest um, flanker from the Gris Charnel line from BDK so this is Gris Charnel x straight and I know a lot of people were saying that they preferred this to the original Gris Charnel and the notes just looked really beautiful and really enticing so I did want to get this and review it for you guys um, and this was sent to me kindly from so avant-garde and I do have a discount code for you guys down below 
So make sure that you save yourself a little bit of coin if you're interested in these and use my discount code. Everything will be linked down below. Um, but as always, this video is not sponsored and I do not have any obligation to give these perfumes any kind of positive review. So I'm just going to be very honest with you guys and tell you exactly how I feel about these perfumes as I will always be um, very honest with you guys. Even if things are sent to me, I'll always tell you exactly how I feel about them. So the notes that are in Gris Charnel Extrait are cardamom, black tea, and fig, iris, bourbon vetiver, cystus, in incanus, I'm not sure what that is, sandalwood, Madagascar vanilla, tonka bean, cedar, and Indi Indonesian patchouli leaf. Um, so first of all, the bottle is really, really pretty. I actually used to have the original Gris Charnel and that perfume is actually incredible. It's a really, really amazing perfume. It's a beautiful kind of a fig coffee um, sandalwood fragrance. It's very earthy. It's very sophisticated. It's very luxurious. It has good performance. Um, I've, I had never smelled anything quite like Gris Charnel. Quite a fantastic fragrance, if you ask me. It just, at the end of the day, wasn't something I gravitated toward and wore a whole lot. So I haven't had Gris Charnel for a long time. This one intrigued me because it did look like it had a lot of cardamom and a lot of vanilla and I am a cardamom vanilla fanatic so I absolutely wanted to try this one. Okay and what I would say about this one is that it smells to me like a more vanilla version a more vanilla sort of a nighttime version of the original Gris Charnel. The original Gris Charnel was more sort of earthy woody daytime and evening, day and evening, I think. Very versatile, unisex. Um, like I said, super sophisticated, classy, just smelled expensive um, and a really, really nice perfume. This one takes it a little bit more into that nighttime mode and a little bit sweeter. And I think still very unisex. I do have it on a strip here. So it's quite intoxicating. Actually, I do find this one to be pretty masculine, if I'm honest. I don't absolutely love the way that this smells on my skin. I will be perfectly honest. Um, I like it on clothing and I like it on paper, but once it gets on my skin, there's something about, I think, that vetiver, the patchouli, um, and maybe the vanilla. It's kind of a weird, sweet, earthy thing that happens on my skin, and I don't really love it. Personally, if I'm being honest, I really liked the way the original Gris Charnel smelled better than this one. Um, this one's nice, don't get me wrong. Um, it reminds me a little bit of like a designer cologne, like a men's designer cologne in a sense. It has that like sweet, powdery, kind of woody, spicy, um, cardamom nighttime feel to it. So it is nice, but I have to be honest, I don't love it personally. If you like it, you know, maybe you might really love it just because I don't doesn't mean you won't. I know a lot of people like this one, but if you're asking me, I still prefer the original Gris Charnel. If I had to pick, I would go with the original Gris Charnel. That's just my personal feelings. So it has really good longevity. It's very sexy. It's very warm. It has a sweetness to it. It has an earthiness to it. You really get that patchouli. You get lots of cardamom. It's a little powdery. Um, you get some tonka bean in there. And it is nice, but there's something about it that sort of catches my breath a little bit and makes me think I don't totally love it. Whereas the original Gris Charnel, I could smell that thing all day long. It just smelled so smooth and so intriguing and so beautiful. So I think that this would be good if you're looking for something a little more in the vanilla direction. Um, but personally, I have to say, I still prefer the original Gris Charnel. If you guys haven't checked that one out either, you can also get that version on So Avant Garde. So you can get this one and I believe you can get the original and they're definitely both worth checking out. But I would say sample, I would say don't blind buy this because it does smell um, different. I mean, different to me than how I thought it was going to. It still smells really good, but I'm just not obsessed. Um, so yeah, really good longevity with this one. I did have it on my skin a couple of times. It lasted for hours and hours and hours. In my clothing, it lasted for a couple of days. So this is a really beautiful one, and it is definitely worth checking out if you're interested in it. Okay, this next fragrance is from the House of Oud, and I am obsessed with the way this smells, you guys. So first of all, the bottle is amazing. The bottle is so beautiful, so aesthetically pleasing, and so stunning. So the House of Oud bottles all have kind of like this egg shape almost, and it just looks like a real work of art. It's this white and beige sort of egg-shaped 
cap and then it's on the gold base and it just looks incredible the bottle is amazing and the scent inside you guys is also really beautiful so this actually wasn't a blind um, fragrance I had smelled this before a couple of years ago wasn't sure if I really liked it because back then when I was testing perfumes quote-unquote testing perfumes I didn't actually give it a full proper wear test I had only smelled it kind of on paper and I realized over the last six months to a year that I really can't make a decision about a perfume unless I actually wear it. You have to physically put it on your skin and even give it a full wear test in order to know how you really, really feel about a perfume. And, you know, back in the day, I was kind of doing what a lot of people do, which is spraying it on paper, spraying it on the box and kind of deciding yay or nay based on that. But you really just don't get a full sensation for a perfume when you do that. So like I said, really interesting, really beautiful bottle. This is what it looks like when you take the cap off. And is this not just one of the most aesthetically pleasing, beautiful bottles you've ever seen? But the scent inside is also amazing. And actually I have it on a paper strip, so I'm just gonna put this puck. Okay, so the notes that you have in What About Pop are popcorn, caramel, hawthorn, whipped cream, Madagascar vanilla, night blooming cereus, ebony, benzoin, musk, Madagascar vetiver, and ambergris. So this is a sweet, comforting, powdery, soft, caramelly popcorn, gourmand, kind of a lactonic fragrance. It's very warm. It's quite gourmand. Um, this, when you first spray it, smells very, very much like popcorn. You get a really realistic but soft popcorn note in here. You also get a lot of sweetness. You get a little bit of a milkiness and a creaminess, which I think is coming from the whipped cream. And that's, you know, for me, that's really the gist of it. It doesn't have a ton of depth, even though there are some woody notes in the background and there is a little bit of vetiver. Um, and there's a little bit of like a floral component as well, just to round it out. I'm a huge proponent, you guys, of rounding perfumes out with other notes. Um, I'm not one of these people who likes to wear a perfume that smells straight up like food. Yes, popcorn smells good, but I don't want to smell like literally a bag of movie theater popcorn. To me, that is not enticing. That is not sexy. That is not feminine. That is not, you know, interesting to me. I don't want to smell just like a food. I want to smell foody and gourmandy, but also round it out with some floral components and some woody notes. And they do a really nice job of that in this fragrance. So when you first spray it, yes, you do get a very realistic popcorn note, but then it starts to become a little bit powdery, um, a little bit vanillic, soft. You can tell that there's a little bit of a floral component to it. So it's not just straight up like movie theater, you know, popcorn vibes. It's very relaxing. The vibes that it gives me is like relaxing evening, wear around the house, um, wear to bed, very cozy, very comforting. It's that kind of perfume. It's it's not what I would consider to be a sexy perfume. It's not what I would consider, I, I wouldn't wear this to the office. I really don't know like where to place this perfume actually. It just is very comforting and warm and cozy and delicious. It smells really amazing. This is a perfume that I think is definitely worth trying, especially if you like gourmand fragrances and especially if you like a popcorn note. Yeah, I will say that the longevity with this one is not the best. Um, it's not a super bold, intense perfume, which I guess is a good thing because it is a cozy, warm, like comforting scent. It's probably not something you want to be beast mode, but it doesn't have the best longevity and it doesn't have a huge projection or a huge sillage. Like I would say that I probably get maybe about four hours of this one, four to five hours before it's pretty soft to the point that I can't really smell it that well anymore. So performance wise, not the greatest, but scent wise, beautiful and aesthetics, beautiful and just really a pleasure to wear and to smell. The next fragrance was also sent to me from So Avant Garde. This is called Double Attack from Mind Games. From Mind Games. Now this perfume, you guys, what this reminds me of my first impression when I first smelled it is it smells to me like Baccarat Rouge in, in Baccarat Rouge's family, but with an added chocolate note. So it doesn't smell just like Baccarat Rouge, but it really gives me um, a similar feeling to it. That was the first thing that popped into my mind was that this smells kind of like Baccarat Rouge, but with a chocolate 
addition. So this perfume is actually really addictive and really delicious. And this is one to check out if you like um, like a warm, gourmand, sexy, kind of a nighttime fragrance. So this one has notes of bitter orange, pink pepper, pimento, cinnamon, agave, geranium, dark chocolate, Madagascar vanilla, sandalwood, and bourbon vetiver. I have it on a strip here. Oh my gosh, you guys. If you like chocolate, um, this is one to check out. So it's actually so good. The chocolate sticks out to me more than any of the other notes. I don't get a ton of cinnamon per se, but there is like a sweetness to it. There's like a sweet spiciness to it. The chocolate that's in here is also a dark chocolate, but it's really sweetened up with the bitter orange, the vanilla, the cinnamon. Um, there's also some super sexy like pink pepper and pimento in the opening. So there is this warm spiciness to it. Um, it gives it a little bit of a kick. It makes it interesting and it adds a little bit of depth and a little bit of sexiness to it. Whenever there's pink pepper in a perfume, it just adds this sexy spice to the opening um and it smells really really nice so yeah i don't you guys this one's just so good um it's really really good it's sweet it's gourmand ish but not too gourmand it's addictive flirty dark unisex for sure and I would say leaning feminine. I think this is one of the more feminine perfumes from the Mind Games range. I still will eventually do an entire Mind Games video because this is a brand not a lot of people I hear talking about and it definitely deserves some recognition because they have some incredible fragrances. Um, and I will do a video and share like my top five from the entire range, but this one is definitely one of the best from the house if you're asking me. It smells so good. So if you like sweet, dark, gourmand, nighttime fragrances um, that aren't too challenging like it's not too woody um, it's not too earthy it just really has it really has this sexy sexy pink pepper chocolate orange vanilla thing going on and it's really good this one is definitely worth checking out okay so this next fragrance is a designer fragrance and i know i haven't been talking as much about designer fragrances lately but don't worry i will be having more designer videos coming up it's just that i have been having so much fun discovering the niche world and i just kind of reached a point where i um, I kind of got tired of a lot of designer scents. I felt like I had smelled, which I really feel like I have. I feel like I've smelled, you know, every new flanker, every current designer one that's on the shelf. A lot of the designer perfumes these days have been, um, very disappointing to me in the year 2020. There wasn't a lot of really good designer releases. Not only that, but a lot of houses Dior in particular are discontinuing or completely changing perfumes from their house. And I don't understand why they're doing it, but they're just losing clientele. They're losing a customer base. Um, and it's just really disappointing to me. So when things like that start happening in the designer world, when you see like Miss Dior being turned into a completely generic, soft, gone with the wind, very generic, um, very not special kind of fragrance. When you see Marc Jacobs doing the same like daisy perfumes over and over and over and over and just like tweaking the notes slightly and then marketing is marketing it as this whole new fragrance um when you see that happening it just becomes very boring it becomes like what am i even doing in the designer world like i'm not going to spend 150 dollars on a new perfume just because you've changed a note and then given it a new flanker name it just becomes monotonous boring uninspiring um and frustrating whereas in the niche world there is literally so much to discover it's just endless there's and there's a lot more interesting, intricate perfumes with a lot of character. You're more likely to find a perfume that not everybody else is wearing. You're more likely to find a perfume that is going to be unique to you, that will be a signature scent, that will kind of give you something fresh, that will intrigue you. It's a whole different experience. It's something totally new to experience and explore. And I've gotten to that point with designer perfumes. So very few designer perfumes these days grab my attention or make me even want to give it a second look. Um, so the YSL Libre line or Lieb, Lieb line, Libra line <laughs> is one of those lines that I still think is fantastic from the designer world. So if you guys watch my channel, you know that I have had a hard time with the Libre perfumes. I'm just going to call it Libre, you guys, because I'm just not good with French. <laughs> I'm not good with French pronunciation. Um, so I have had a hard time with these perfumes since the very first one came out 
They're all incredible. They're all beautiful. The EDP, the EDT is gorgeous. The intense version is gorgeous. This one here is the Le Parfum. So this is the latest flanker to come out from the Libre Libra line. And I will be honest, you guys, I pretty much bought it for the bottle. I know that sounds crazy, but every time I would see this in an advertisement, every time I would see it in somebody's like flat lay on Instagram or on a perfume tray or hear somebody talking about it, the bottle just spoke to me. It's so bougie and so luxurious and so pretty. And I also do really like the scent. I love the scent, but it is a scent that I do have to go lightly with because although I love the way it smells, it does have a propensity to bother me sometimes. So this is an orange blossom lavender vanilla accord line. The entire line is centered around lavender, orange blossom, and vanilla. This one is a little bit different because this one has a much thicker dose of a honeyed vanilla to it. So it's not quite as aromatic. It's a little bit more like sensual vanilla nighttime. And I really appreciate that about this particular one. The original one for me, you guys was like headache central, absolute headache central. I could not wear it. I just wanted to get sick every time I would smell that one. As much as I loved how it smelled, I could not physically handle that perfume. This one, on the other hand, I find it's, it's really beautiful and it gives me the same feelings as the first EDP and also the intense one. It smells obviously very similar to them and it's incredible. It's beautiful. It's sexy. It's seductive. It's mature. It's sophisticated. It smells expensive. It smells luxurious. Um, I really, really like it. And it also kind of gives me fresh laundry vibes, which I know I'm not the only person who said that. I was re reading reviews on Fragrantica and a lot of people said that this reminded them of fresh laundry, which it really does um, in a very strange way. So this perfume has notes of ginger, saffron, mandarin orange, bergamot, orange blossom, lavender, bourbon vanilla, honey, tonka bean, and vetiver. So I really think that it's that saffron and the honey and the vanilla that changes this perfume for me and makes it a little bit more wearable compared to the other ones. So I do really like this one. I have to be honest, sometimes when I smell it, like on my clothing, it starts to bother me. So it still does have a potential to bother me, but at the same time, I love the way that it smells and I also love the bottle. And yeah, so I'm kind of curious to wear this around my boyfriend. I still haven't worn this around him. It'll be interesting to wear it for like an evening in or going out going very lightly because it is a strong perfume. So if you wear it for a night in or like Netflix and chill cuddle kind of thing, you would have to go lighter with it because it is very, very potent. You do not need very much. The performance with this is beast mode. Um, lasts forever, really nice trail, will last in your clothing for a very long time. And I have to say that what I like most about this perfume is wearing it on a freshly laundered item of clothing, whether that is a um, pajama top or a robe or a lounge top or a cashmere sweater, something that has been freshly laundered and still has that laundry freshness to it. And then when you spray a little bit of this on the clothing, it just smells super relaxing, but also super luxurious and sophisticated and also very comforting at the same time. So it's a very um, multi-dimensional, multifaceted fragrance that it's just incredible. It's one of the best from the designer world, I think. It's one of the most unique. And um, also it's kind of polarizing. People, a lot of people either can't handle this one or they really, really love it. So that is why I sell Libre Le Parfum. I have worn this a few times already. And yeah, what I notice about it is I just can't wear it for too many days in a row and it will start to bother me. Like if I wear it too often, it will start to bother me and it's super, super strong. Okay, so now for the perfume that I think most of you probably came to this video to see my thoughts on. Um, so this is a perfume that was created by Stephanie Letter from the channel SMLXO. Um, personally, I don't watch her channel. I've seen a handful of her videos when it came to perfume stuff because I think those were the only videos of hers I discovered were when I was looking up like perfume collection videos. She did have a really nice array of fragrances in her collection. I really like her style. Um, you know, I think she seems like a really nice person, but I'm not like a Stephanie Letta mega fan or anything like that where I was like, oh my gosh, I have to get her perfume. I mostly wanted to get this to review it for you guys. So first of all, I want to give you a nice look at the bottle here. This is an absolutely stunning, beautiful bottle. It kind of looks, I think, like the, is it the Estee Lauder bottles? 
that look very similar to this. So it looks very luxurious, very high end, very pretty. Um, it has a very substantial, heavy metallic cap, beautiful kind of fluted glass. And then it also has this really pretty paper label. Love the font. Um, it's very minimalistic, very elegant, very chic looking. So she did a really, really nice job with the bottle. Um, and it just looks fantastic sitting out on your dresser. So really, really nice job with the presentation. The atomizer is also quite nice. So the notes that you have in here are pear leaf, pink pepper, and wild freesia in the opening. In the middle, you have sheer jasmine, lily of the valley, and orris. And in the base, you have sandalwood, marshmallow musk, and a touch of moss. So I just sprayed it here on paper, and I've also worn this perfume on my skin, and I've given it a full day wear test so I can tell you guys like how long it lasted and my full impressions on it. So first of all, what I will say, this is a very, very likable, mass pleasing fragrance. I think that you would be hard pressed to find somebody who smelled this and didn't think that it smelled nice. I also think that it was very smart to go in this direction in terms of notes and the way it smells because it does appeal, I think, to a younger crowd. I think that for those of us who have tried lots of niche perfumes and we just have a, a more expanded palette, if you will, and we're okay with being a little bit more challenged, um, I don't think many of us would be obsessed with this perfume just because it is very... Um, mainstream mass pleasing and it does I think appeal to a younger crowd so I'm not gonna lie the very first time I smelled this you guys the very first time I sprayed it immediately it reminded me of the Ariana Grande perfumes this to me smells like a mix between Ari and thank you next so thank you next um, is a very sort of a gourmandy whipped creamy kind of a fragrance I think there's macaroon or something in there and also that one has I believe I believe sandalwood, but that one has a dill pickle kind of a quality to it. A lot of people get like dill pickle from Thank You Next. This also has um, a little bit of that sort of, a little bit of that dill pickle vibe for me. This smells quite similar in a sense. Not that it smells the same, but it smells similar to me to Thank You Next. It also has this like soft marshmallowy airiness, the same as what you would find in a lot of other Ariana Grande perfumes. So if you like Cloud, if you like Thank You Next, if you like Ari from Ariana Grande, you'll probably really like this because it is kind of along those lines. So it is a really beautiful perfume. I have to be honest, when I first smelled it, I was disappointed a little bit because I was expecting it to be a little more um, kind of rich smelling, a little more luxurious, a little more mature smelling. I was really hoping, because I think Stephanie Letta and I are around the same, like same-ish age. I think she's a little younger than me, but I was kind of hoping this would be um, something I could see a woman in her like 30s wearing, like in her, you know, 30 years old and up. Um, I wanted it to be mature and kind of deep and sensual. And it's not really like that. It's a little bit more fruity, fresh, marshmallowy. It definitely does go a little bit more in the celebrity, like Ariana Grande direction, which isn't a bad thing. I think that that, like I said, that was super smart because a lot of her um, audience, I think, are younger girls and women who look up to her. They look to her for makeup and hair advice. Um, you know, they're a little bit of a younger YouTube crowd. Like I said, I think for people who are specifically looking for to expand their collection, their perfume collection, and who have tried a lot of niche perfumes, I don't think they're going to be wowed by this one. That said, it is a really soft, pretty easy to wear fragrance. It does smell beautiful. It does smell really nice. It's very feminine. It has a freshness to it. It does have a little bit of a powderiness to it coming from that auras. It's beautiful. I can't say it's not beautiful. I just, like for me, I was a little disappointed because I feel like I can get the same vibe from a celebrity perfume that costs a lot less. I will say that I live in Canada. This perfume, I paid full price for it, which I think, let me look up how much it is. So, okay, yeah. So this is 155 US dollars. 155 US dollars, that's almost 200 Canadian, plus tax, plus shipping, plus when I got this, you guys, at my front door, I still owed duties and taxes. So this was over $200 for me to get in Canada. It also took almost three weeks to arrive. So the shipping was really not that great. I paid an arm and a leg for it. And to me, it literally smells like it, this could have been an Ariana Grande release, which would have costed me $60 Canadian. So I could have saved 
you know, 75% of my money and got pretty much the same thing tomorrow. <laughs> so that's what kind of disappointed me about this perfume. Um, is it pretty? Yeah, it's pretty. Bottle's beautiful. Um, in terms of the strength, it's not a super strong, bold fragrance. It's not the weakest I've ever smelled. Um, if you're comparing it, for example, something like Ari, I'm just going to compare the Ariana Grande because we're already talking about that. So this, I would say, lasts longer than Ari, is a little stronger, but not as strong or long-lasting or projecting as, for example, Thank You Next. I would say it had okay longevity. Like I got probably a good five, six hours. So the longevity with this is not bad. Five or six hours for a soft, fruity, floral, musky, marshmallowy fragrance is pretty good. Um, so that wasn't bad. Sorry, you guys, my coffee cup is um, wobbling. And the more I come back to it and smell it, the more I think that I do like it. But it's just not really my type of fragrance. I've only had this one for about a week and a half, maybe two weeks. So this, in, in terms of my subjective, do I like it? I don't think I've had it enough, enough time to know if I really like it, but I have had it enough to know that I'm kind of disappointed with the price and overall what I get for the price, if that makes sense. That being said, I think that this would make a great gift idea for the younger people in your family. If you have teenagers, if you have anybody 13 years old and up into their 20s, this would be a pretty gift, a really nice gift. Um, very likable, very mass pleasing. It's not going to offend anybody. Nobody's going to dislike it. Yeah, but if you're asking me, it's kind of like the slightly more sophisticated older sister to thank you next. That's kind of what I get. If Thank You Next and Ari came together and had a child and then that child grew up and went to university, that's kind of what this is. So yeah, I don't know you guys. I'm not head over heels in love with it. I did want to get it to review for you guys. I don't know. I was talking to a friend of mine and I told her that this is probably actually one of my, um, one of my least favorite purchases of this year so far just because I wasn't wowed by it and also it was expensive and it took a long time to come to me so for all those reasons i was a little bit disappointed but i'm gonna see what my boyfriend thinks of it i'm wondering how he finds it if he thinks it smells like sexy feminine if he likes it on me if it's a good date kind of perfume this would also be a nice one to wear to the gym i think because it isn't gonna choke anyone out it's not super strong it would be a great wear to school fragrance you could wear this to university you could wear this to class you could wear this in high school um you could definitely wear it to the office it's not gonna bother anybody however it doesn't give office vibes it doesn't give office sophisticated it's not it doesn't give the same vibes as a sophisticated designer scent it definitely gives a little more it gives it gives celebrity perfume kind of scent vibes yeah like to me it smells like it could have just been another ariana grande flanker so that's my thoughts on this perfume really nice um but I'm not wowed by it, and I guess I haven't had it long enough to really... I mean, I don't I don't love it, you guys. I'm not jumping out of my chair about it. I'm pretty sure I'm going to end up selling it. Um, yeah, so that's just me being perfectly honest. The bottle is so pretty, though. Like, the bottle is worth keeping just for aesthetic purposes. But in terms of the perfume itself, I'm not wowed by the perfume itself. And I would not pay this price. I think that it would have been fine to charge maybe... 90 us dollars like i think 90 to 100 us dollars for this would have been a great price point i think 155 is way too much for what you get you can get some incredible fragrances that are mind-blowing unique long-lasting and something we haven't seen before for like 150 dollars on fragrance buy you know for example so to pay $200 for something that i feel like could have just been a celebrity scent it just is a little disappointing to me and yeah, anyway, that's my thoughts on the Letta 22 Auris. So you guys, that was it for today's little haul. I actually have more perfumes, but I'm gonna have to do a part two, otherwise this video is just gonna be way too long. Um, so we'll just stick to five in today's video, but I really wanted to share my thoughts on these perfumes with you guys. So just to give you a quick recap, um, my favorite ones from today's video are definitely the What About Pop from the House of Oud. Like I said, if you like gourmand and you like um, popcorn, and you want something like soft and powdery and relaxing and kind of unique, definitely do check out What About Pop. That one's really good. And the House of Oud perfumes are a little bit more affordable in terms of niche fragrances. And like I said, I do have a discount code um, for So Avant Garde for that one. 
I also really, really liked the Mind Games Double Attack. This is one to check out if you like chocolate and if you want something super sexy and a little bit more unique for the nighttime would make a really great date night perfume. And I also have sort of a love-hate relationship with the YSL Libre Le Parfum. Love it more than I don't like it, but it does have the ability to kind of bother me sometimes just because I, th I think it's polarizing even for myself. Like some days I love it, some days I don't want to smell it. Just really depends. And like I said, the Gris Charnel Extrait. This one's really, really nice, but not for me personally. And then the Letta was one that I just was sort of very underwhelmed with when I purchased it, but it's not a bad smelling perfume. It's just kind of like... A little bit unremarkable and I think too expensive personally for what you get. That's just my point of view. However, I will say that if you, you know, I understand like if you're a fan of um, a certain influencer and if you've been following them for a really long time and you really admire them and you like them as a person and you want to support them, I think she did a beautiful job of the perfume in general. It's very pretty and I, you know, I think she's a really sweet person and stuff. So I can understand like if I was a diehard like SMLXO channel fan, I probably would have purchased it just to support her. But like I said, I, I got it just for the perfume factor. Um, yeah, those are my thoughts. So those are my thoughts for these perfumes today, you guys. I hope that you enjoyed today's video. Um, I will try to link everything down below for you guys and, um, that's it. So stay tuned for part two.